We're going to talk about vena venography and IVIS. It's going to take a few minutes to kind of talk about how we do it, the importance of it. And we've been kind of talking about pelvic congestion syndrome all morning. So we'll take a few minutes and kind of discuss that. Um, in terms of pelvic congestion syndrome or superinguinal venous obstruction, it can be uh, broken down to intrinsic compression or extrinsic compression. Sorry. Um, in terms of intrinsic compression, you have post-thrombotic syndrome. We can have scarring of the vein. You can have intraluminal webs or septations from previous injury of the vein. You can have fibrotic changes from catheters. Dialysis patients can have some changes there. In terms of extrinsic compression, which we spend most of our time on at Center for Vascular Medicine, in terms of may Turner syndrome. And we discussed that before. I'll show some pictures about that uh, in terms of tumors or adhesions from previous surgery. Uh, in terms of diagnostic modalities, we had an excellent presentation just before mine, so I'm not going to spend too much time about that, but what we're going to focus on is that in terms of the old gold standard, that was venography. Venography's been around for, for a fair amount of time. You know, in the past, it, it was excellent in terms of giving us the information that we needed. Um, in terms of CT and MRV, as Dr. Pappas mentioned earlier today, we need, I, I have some limitations in terms of the studies that we get, so maybe we both need to move to Connecticut and get, get the right intervention radiologist. Uh, in terms of ultrasound, there are some challenges and limitations as well. But the new gold standard is IVIS, intravascular ultrasound. IVIS actually allows us, gives us 3D images, allows us to, to actually visualize the, the, the lumen area. You can actually measure, measure the compressed area versus the post-thrombotic changes. And we can also visualize synechiae or webbing, which can be seen with IVIS. This is just a, a slide talking about how we do venograms at the Center for Vascular Medicine. It's a procedure in which we inject contrast to see abnormalities. Now, the puncture is via the femoral veins. However, as we discussed the other day during our journal club, Dr. Satwa mentioned that if there's some disease in the, in the femoral veins, we actually can taste, let the patient be uh, prone, and we can go from the popliteal veins. We have some imaging in terms of the popliteal veins. But in general, we go from the femoral veins. We, uh, uh, we, can get, we do bilateral hand injections. Um, in terms of catheter placement, subsequently we put a catheter in the inferior vena cava. We inject dye to see if there's any abnormalities in the inferior vena cava. We also localize the renal veins in that area. With that, we, we, use, we, use, we use road mapping, and we use a catheter and a hydrophilic wire to access the left renal vein. We advance our catheter into the left renal vein and do an injection there to see if they, we have an enlarged ovarian vein. We're fortunate that our ultrasound technologists are excellent in our, in our practice, so we have a lot of that information as we walk into the room. We know that the, there, that the ovarian vein may be large, is there some periuterine reflux, uh, we actually get a size of the ovarian vein. So once we position the catheter into the left ovarian vein, we can then uh, pass the catheter further down using a hydrophilic wire. We can go down into the pelvis area, and um, we can actually look at the periuterine or periovarian veins. And I'll show pictures of that in a moment. This is just a slide that we kind of talked about before. Uh, you've seen several, uh, this is, I'm sure by the end of the day, you'll be quite uh, familiar with the, the, anatomy, the pelvic anatomy where you have that compression of the left common iliac vein by the right common iliac artery. You can also have some compression of the right common iliac vein by the right common iliac artery, that classic May Turner syndrome. And this is courtesy of Dr. Netter. This is a venogram that shows some compression of that left common iliac vein. And what you see very nicely is that pelvic, that, that cross-filling, because of that, that compression of the iliac vein, you have cross-filling in the area of the pelvis. Now, the thing with venogram is that it will give us the gross images, but it, it, in, terms of, in terms of any interventions, in terms of uh, stent placement or, ven or uh, venoplasty, sometimes we need a little more information to try to make the appropriate decisions. In that case, as I mentioned, intravascular ultrasound or IVIS is kind of the, the tool that we need in the gold standard for that treatment. After we cross the lesion uh, with, with the catheter, uh, we actually can get measurements with the intravascular ultrasound, with the IVIS catheter. And as you see, um, we can, the, the IVIS catheter is very important that it can tell us where the stenotic lesions are. It can also tell us in terms of the landing zone, if we're going to stent that vessel, where the appropriate landing is. If it, in, in the area of the confluence, where the, ilia, where the inferior vena cava goes into the iliac veins, we can actually find that a little more carefully with the IVIS. There have been studies that have demonstrated that there's some difficulty in terms of determining the, the true location of the, of the confluence by just using venogram alone. Um, but on the right side, you see the actual sizes of the, of the vein, the common iliac vein, uh, the external iliac vein, and the common femoral vein. And what we do with IBIS, we actually can use that. If the vein is small uniformly, we can actually use those standard areas, or we can compare our compressed area to a normal, normal set of anatomy.
This again is just a, a, a picture again showing the problem with May Turner syndrome. You have that compression of the iliac vein, and again, in that venogram on your right hand side, you see some cross filling. This is an intravascular ultrasound image where, again, you see the same thing. You see a normal segment of the left common iliac vein on your right in the middle picture, and then you see a compressed area. When we do our venograms in our office, we also, as I mentioned, we look at the, we look at the, the left renal vein, we go and, and evaluate the left ovarian vein. As you see in the slide, we actually have a catheter into the left ovarian vein. The left ovarian vein is significantly large. So with that, we can actually pass a hydrophilic catheter down into the, we can embolize the left ovarian vein and also pass it down into the, into the pelvic veins as well. And we tend to embolize it with sodium tetradecol. Uh, we actually we do that, we do embolizations done, we put the patient in reverse Trendelenburg, and we do, and utilize the Valsalva technique. Two minutes. Uh, this is another selective venogram. We talk about chemical, emb chemical embolization. We can position that catheter down to the periuterine or periovarian veins and inject that, those as well. This is another slide talking about a patient who has a large, enlarged ovarian vein. Again, we, we can either do chemical embolization or we can do the night and all coils that we were just talked about. This is a study, this is a very important study in terms of the importance of IVIS, actually where they, ran, where, they, where they compared intravascular ultrasound to venogram. It was a 14-month study where they, where they used 100 patients, and, some of the, and they compared intravascular ultrasound to IVIS. And what they found was that IVIS detected lesions 26% more so than, than, than venogram itself. And part of the reason, because of the, the elliptical nature of the vein, it makes it very difficult to determine if there is some significant compression. This is, again, just an uh, intravascular ultrasound image that shows some compression. You have a normal vein, the normal segment on the, on the left-hand side. In the middle segment, you have a compressed area. Same thing again. Uh, and actually, IVIS can also determine if there's any scarring or sneakia inside the vein itself. You can see some scarring or some abnormal areas. I appreciate it. And, that's, and, and actually, that cannot be used. It's difficult to see that on, on uh, venogram. This is another uh, uh, pre and post image. This is a patient, and, and again, you see the elliptical nature of the left common iliac vein. We have the normal segment, and then we actually supersede that with the compressed area. This patient's actually compressed about 60%. And the thing is that's interesting is once we place the stent, once the venoplasty and stent is placed, the vessel becomes more of a circular uh, fashion, becomes a circular uh, in, in orientation. Now, this patient here, and it's kind of hard to, I'll show the venogram in a moment. Again, she's significantly compressed, about 85%. Young lady who came in with severe uh, restless legs and dyspareunia. Um, when we did her, her, her IVIS ultrasound, she, had, she was compressed 85%. And I just want to show the next. And if you see in the, in the, it's a slide in the middle, there's that, that's actually compression of the left common iliac vein. And that large vessel there is actually a collateral. It looks like a, a, a collateral or the, or the hypogastric vein. And I'll show this. Right here. So, so as, as the vein is compressed, you see that, that retrograde flow. It's kind of a cool picture to me, I think. You know, where you see, we could actually visualize the compression of that iliac vein by the artery, and you see that retrograde flow into the pelvis. And the interesting thing about this slide here, it's not really that impressive. You say, okay, well, this is, this is the pre-stenting, here's the pro-stenting. Honestly, do you see a big difference between the two? Anyone? Not really, right? You don't see that. And that's because this, this is the venogram. However, when you go to the next one, to the IVIS, it was, how do I pause? It was markedly compressed. And actually, this patient was so compressed, we actually did double barrel uh, venous stenting. She was markedly compressed. But, but when you look at the venogram itself, it's not that impressive. But the significant part is that you see, as, as, as IVIS will give us that information that we missed from the venogram. This is a patient here, a uh, young lady who came in with pelvic pain again. And what you see in that venogram, you see that compression of the iliac vein, but you also see some retrograde flow through an enlarged ovarian vein, which is, which is kind of cool, actually. So as you, as the, at, because of that 
because of the degree of that compression, you actually see that retrograde flowing. And then when we place the stent, subsequently that, that, um, that reflux is gone. But again, the key thing with that is that, okay, that looks great there because you can see something. But however, when you look at the ibis, it's markedly compressed. There we are, right there, okay? So it's markedly compressed, and then if you go forward, there's a normal lumen area. So it's a huge difference that's not really seen with, 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 ven with venogram by itself, venography by itself. And if you look on the other side, you can actually see the changes after, after the stent's placed. So in summary, venogram has been the old gold standard for, in terms of uh, evaluation of pelvic congestion syndrome, but the new standard is obviously IVIS. It seems to give us more information as to, as to how, uh, where the lesions are, and it's very important in terms of pinpoint uh, accuracy in terms of placing stents in the appropriate area. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah.